This is Dave Sundstrom. Welcome to another video celebrating entertainment from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was the number one box office grossing film of 1969, and anyone who has seen this movie understands exactly why it was so popular. However, did you know that there was something in this film that just drove actor Robert Redford nuts? Something that he truly didn't like. Why am I mincing words here? I'll go ahead and just say it. He absolutely hated everything about it. What am I talking about? Well, give me a minute or two and I'll do my best to explain. But first, I must give credit where credit is due. The inspiration for this video came from an article that I found in this month's Remind magazine. Those that have subscribed to my channel already know how much I enjoy reading this magazine every month. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll post a link to Remind Magazine's homepage in the description section of this video. From there, you can learn more about this wonderful periodical, and if you choose to, you can subscribe. I think the biggest thing that Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid had going for it were these two. Robert Redford and Paul Newman were just so darn good as the title characters. And Catherine Ross wasn't half bad either. And of course you had George Roy Hill's direction coupled with William Goldman's fantastic script. Yep, everything just came together like a perfect recipe. Now with that said, there was one ingredient that Robert Redford could not stand. And you know what? The studio executives who were keeping an eye on the making of the movie, they didn't like it much either. Have you guessed what I'm talking about? Well, if you knew that I was talking about the film's soundtrack, and in particular the hit song, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, then you, my friend, deserve a gold star. Burt Bacharach, the soundtrack's composer, recalls coming up with the catchy little song filled with ukuleles and a bouncy, mirth-filled rhythm while watching that iconic scene with Paul Newman and Catherine Ross on a bike. The melody came to him almost instantly, and as he worked on the song, he just filled it up with dummy words, phrases that he gave little thought to, something that he was certain he would change later on as he refined the song. But the more he worked on the song, the more he realized that his dummy words, well, they were perfect, even if they really didn't have much to do with the movie. In 2019, while being interviewed by Brian Alexander of USA Today, Redford admitted that he was one of the song's leading critics. He said, when the film was released, I was highly critical. How did this song fit with the film? There was no rain. At the time, it seemed like a dumb idea. How wrong I was as it turned out to be a giant hit. You can say that again, Robert. Raindrops became a number one hit, not just in the U.S., but in Canada as well. Over the years, the single has sold in excess of two million copies, and the song itself won an Oscar for Best Original Song. And if that weren't enough, Burt Bacharach took home an Academy Award for Best Original Score as well. Pretty darn good results for a song that Bob Redford didn't think very much of. There's a ton more good stuff in the November issue of Remind Magazine, along with boatloads of puzzles, trivia, and comics. If you're a fan of music, movies, and TV from decades gone by, you should really check it out. And you should also consider giving this video a like by clicking on that little thumbs up icon. And what the heck, why not subscribe to my little channel? Just like Remind Magazine, I talk about the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, Thank you so much for watching.